Okay. this figuring out your functional groups. Now this is gallic acid and it has antifungal, antiviral, and antioxidant properties. Okay, so um, where's your most acidic proton? Right here. Okay, so there's your most acidic proton because this group here, right here, is a carboxylic acid. And carboxylic acids have pKa values between 4 and 5. Okay, so you can just say between 4 and 5. So this means this is your acid. This is your base. Whenever you see the non, the metals, go ahead and make it a plus. And that allows you to see that the oxygen is an O minus. So what's that look like? If you did the Lewis structure, it would look like this. Okay, so that way, you want to really zone in on your your negatives because that's your nu this is be a nucleophilic site. You'll learn nucleophile coming up. This is a nucleophilic site, and um, nucleophile means it is it loves philic loves the nucleus. Well, your nucleus has the positive charge. Okay, so it loves the nucleus, and so it's going to be attracted to something that's positive because it's a negative, and so these lone pairs will take away this hydrogen, and that's an acidic hydrogen, and those electrons then go towards the oxygen. And then you draw your product. So you just redraw the gallic acid, the molecule, nothing happened to this molecule. You draw your carboxylic acid here, and as you can see, your lone pairs then go here and you get an, a negative and then this hydrogen is now 
bonded to the OH, which makes water. Okay, and then potassium is going to hang out next to the negative charge. So that's going to be your products. I need you to be able to draw your products. That's the first thing you want to do. So you have to assign the acid and the base. So this is your acid, this is your base. So label acid and base. Now we got to label conjugate acid and conjugate base. Well, this is your conjugate base. Your conjugate acid is where your proton went. Okay, so there's your acidic proton. So here it is over here on the uh, pro uh, reagent side, reactants. And here it is on the products. So now you want to assign pKa values to the acid and the conjugate acid. So you can look at the chart and you can see that your pKa value for a carboxylic acid is 4 to 5. I'm looking at your slides table 2.2 shows you some pKa values. You can also look these up on the web. Um, water is pKa 15.7. So now we have to put in our equilibrium arrows, okay? So we're gonna, and we go towards the weakest side, which has the highest pKa value. So you're comparing 15.7 and 4, 5, a 5. So you're looking at equilibrium values that are going to go mostly towards your products. And then what's the difference between those? Eh, like nine zeros, right? So if you strike 16 minus five, that's nine zeros. So that's how many times it, your equilibrium will allow, go towards the product. Okay, so that is the um, example of what you need to be do, able to do with your pK values. Now, one of the lessons we're going to learn today is being able to um, look at um, acid and acid strength without pK values. And there are some um, factors that determine the strength. And we're going to look at those factors. Electronegativity, formal charge, resonance, size, induction. Okay. And so what determines the acid strength? You're always going to want to draw its conjugate base. Okay, so this is the rule. You draw the conjugate base, and then step two, you ask yourself, how stable is the conjugate base? Okay, so you know potassium hydroxide is a strong base. Okay, and if you make the conjugate acid... This is the conjugate acid. How stable is that? How stable is water? Well, it's the most stable, right? So because, yes, very stable, the conjugate acid is very stable, that means it's a strong base. Okay, well, what about um, HCl? You know that's a strong acid. So you draw its conjugate base, which is just Cl minus. And this is very stable, okay? So this is very fine not to have the H, the proton, okay? And because that's very stable, the conjugate base is very stable, this becomes, this is how you know that's a strong acid. So we're going to look at those factors. And then we're going to work your Pogel activity 3B. In fact, we're just gonna work 3B. Okay. So we are on page 
32. Acids and base, predicting acid and base strength without pK values. Okay, so we're looking at the stability of the conjugate base. And here's your model. This is your conjugate base. And this is your acid. As you can see, we have the electron pair going with the conjugate base. The strength of an acid can be predicted by estimating the stability of the conjugate base formed. The strength of a base is affected by the following factors. Okay, so the following factors are size, formal charge, electronegativity, residence, inductive electron withdrawing groups. Okay, so these are one, two, three, four, five. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to draw the conjugate base. Okay, and then you'll have to uh, rank the um, the acid strength based on one of the five factors. Okay, so those are the two things you're gonna have to do in this exercise. And that's what we're learning. Okay, so let's look at question 1A. Consider the forward direction of the reaction in model one. Based on the Lewis definition, HA donates or accepts an electron pair. So acids, I always have to think about aluminum trichloride, and I know this is a strong Lewis acid, okay? And it's because there's an unhybridized P orbital on aluminum that can accept um, electron pair, okay? So a Lewis acid accepts electrons in the definition. So number one would be accepts. If the conjugate base A minus is stable, HA is more or less likely to accept electron pair. Okay, so if it's stable, your equilibrium value arrows are like this, okay? So that means that your acid wants to be here. So it is stable. Okay, so the conjugate base here is stable. That means it's um, more likely. See how it has a negative? It's more likely to accept these electrons here in that covalent bond. If the conjugate base is unstable, then it would be less likely. So 1C is less likely. The more stable, okay, so this is your take home, the more stable the conjugate base, then the acid it is derived from is stronger. The more stable the conjugate base, the stronger the acid. Okay, number two. Draw the conjugate base produced in the dissociation of the acids in the following two reactions. Calculate the formal charge on oxygen for each conjugate base. Okay, so you have this, which is your hydronium. And this loses a hydrogen. It becomes water, which is neutral, because oxygen has two bonds, two lone pairs. And then we have water here. And equilibrium arrows, you lose the hydrogen. And now oxygen is negative. Okay, so that's a negative. Formal charge. So one of the things is formal charge right here. 
Okay, so 2B, which conjugate base above would you expect to be more stable? So which one? The water, the first. These are your conjugate bases. You take away the hydrogen. The first one, and why? Well, you know water's stable. It's neutral, okay? It's not going to be as reactive. So 2C, based on the stability of the conjugate base, which acid would be the strongest? H3O plus versus water. What's the pKa values of these? This is about 1.7, and this is a 15.7. So H3O plus is about 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 times more acidic than H2O, okay? And those are measured pKa values, okay? So this is the effect of the formal charge. All right, now let's go to question number three. Consider the reverse reaction in model one. If A anion is stable, it is less likely to donate the electron pair. If A minus is unstable, it's going to be more likely to donate an electron pair. An unstable base, if something's unstable, look at OH minus, okay? If it's unstable, it's going to be more reactive. It's gonna go and get that proton, okay? To be become water, to become neutral. All right, let's go to 4A. Draw the conjugate base produced by the dissociation of methane. Calculate the formal charge of the carbon. Okay, so we're going to draw this reaction here. So here's methane. And it's a nice tetrahedral sp3 carbon, right? Tetrahedral. And the conjugate base, you just lose one of those hydrogens. It leaves its electron pair, see? So the electron pairs go here, they stay, and what is that going to be? Of course, um, that will be a negative. What's the formal charge of carbon? Carbon is group four, minus two dots, minus three dashes, and that is negative one, okay. That looks like a monkey face, doesn't it? That's your conjugate base. Let's ask our question. 4B. What, which would you expect to be more stable? Methane or the conjugate base? CH4 would be more stable. Why? Because it has zero formal charge. Its carbon has its bonding pattern has four bonds, no lone pairs. Predict the direction of the equilibrium based on your answer. All right, well, let's just change this right here. Which way? It will be majorly towards the starting material, so the reactants. Predict the direction of the equilibrium, okay. Uh, the pKa for methane is about 50, okay? So pKa for methane is 50. That's very, very, very high. Does this agree with your conclusions? Yes. The conjugate base is very unstable. Therefore, very reactive. Okay, it will gladly take a proton. Okay, number five, once your group has reached a consensus of the above questions, discuss how the stability of a base affects the strength reactivity of a conjugate base. 
and the strength and relative reactivity of the acids derived from. So um, this is a very strong base, okay? So this is a very strong base. So if the conjugate base is a very strong base, then this is a very weak acid. And you know that because it's got a pKa of 50, okay? But you have something like water. This is a very weak base, and therefore this is a strong, so this is a conjugate base. This is a strong acid, okay? So they're inversely proportional. All right, we're going on to model two. So model two is talking about the acid, base, strength, and size. Okay, so one of the factors was the size. Okay, so we have an element, we have a pK values, and we have the reaction. HA goes to H plus plus A minus. Okay, we're going down group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodide. And you know as you go down a group, it gets larger. Iodide is the Buick. Do you remember those big Buick cars? Okay, so pK values. Now we're getting into negative, negative nine, negative 10. And if you want to react the reaction, it's hydrofluoric acid. All right, there's one, HCl. When it gets deprotonated, it's a strong acid. HBr. And then hydroiodic acid. All right, so let's answer the questions. 6A, which element is the largest inside? size. Which is the smallest? Okay, largest, iodide. Smallest, fluorine. How does the size of the element relate to the pKa values given? Well, HI is 13 zeros one, two, three, one, two, three, three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen times more acidic than HF. Okay, so the larger the size of the element of the conjugate base, the more stable the conjugate base. Therefore, this is the therefore, the stronger the acid. Um, what happens is iodide is really big, okay? So when it's so big, when it gets an electron, it's, it's so big that it's a, it's a large, it's called diffusible electron cloud. And it hardly even notices an extra electron. Fluorine is considered a hard, small. So when you add another electron in there, it, it notices it, okay? So it can make it more unstable, comparatively. All right, I think we're on problem 6C. Based on the pKa values above, which acid is stronger? Do you put HI? The electronegativity of fluorine is 4, while the electronegativity of iodide is 2.7. So electronegativity of fluorine is 4. The electronegativity of iodide is 2.7. Based on the pKa values, which effect is stronger in determining acid strength, electronegativity, or size? Okay. Size matters more than electronegativity, okay? Electronegativity is going to help um, if you're comparing the same size. 
So the only time electronegativity really matters is if you're comparing the same row. Okay, so if you're the same row or period, then you're going to look at electronegativity. Okay, so that's when you use electronegativity as your deciding factor. When you're looking at a group, so you're going down a, a group in the periodic table, you need to be looking at the size of the conjugate base. Okay, as a group, summarize your conclusions regarding how size affects the stability of the base. Use the word polarizability. So, um, if you, as you go down the group, this is why I write, as you go down the group, the um, resulting anion is larger of the conjugate base and therefore more polarizable, therefore the um, stronger its acid. So we already wrote that. Compare the two conjugate bases shown below. This is 6E. Which base would you expect to be more stabilized by size? Okay, so let's draw these out. Remember I told you the way you solve organic problems is you draw the Lewis structures and then you apply the principles. So these are your conjugate bases that you're comparing. Okay, and so do you understand that you're comparing the oxygen versus the bromine? This is called tert butoxide. So we're going to start learning how to name compounds in the next lecture. Okay, so you're, com you're comparing oxygen versus bromine. Are these in the same period? No. Okay, so we're not going to look at electronegativity difference. Okay, that's what we do if we're in the same period. Are they, um, so here is size. Bromine is going to be larger, significantly larger, because it's a different group. Okay, this is like, gosh, group four in the periodic table. This is group two. Okay, so lots, lots bigger. So this is the larger size. What's the question? Which base would you expect to be more stabilized? So this conjugate base would be more stable. Okay, and I'm just gonna tell you. So if you add the acidic hydrogen on here, this is tert butyl. If you look up tert butyl, pKa, you'll see it's about 18. What's HBr? I think we have it right there. Negative nine, pKa. So what's the difference there? 18 plus nine is like 27 zeros. So that's how the size effects. So which acid would be stronger? HBr would be stronger. Explain your answer, like we just did. All right, we have, wow, we have a lot. We have five models. So we're going on. Okay, here we are, model three. We're looking at acid, base, strength, and electronegativity values. Okay, so we have our element. Now, what I'm noticing here is these elements are all in the same period. Okay, so if you're looking at the same period going across a group, then electronegativity is your most dominant factor for determining acid and base strength. All right, and then the pK values are provided here. Now, I usually make my students memorize their pK values. I think you'll get used to looking them up. If I were you, I'd always have a periodic table when I'm doing my organic chemistry because the periodic table can be very helpful. And I'd have my pK values. Okay. Excuse me. 
So HF, we're going to draw our reaction. Remember I told you these acid-base reactions are your first type of organic reactions out of about 180 by the time you get done in August. And so there's your reaction. So these are similar size. So they're going in a, they're in a period, same period. All right, 7A. The elements shown in model 3 are the same row of the same of the periodic table. Would the size of the elements be approximately the same? Yes. 7B. Based on electronegativity values, which element in model 3 is the most electronegative? Fluorine, right? 4.0. This is the most. What's your least? Carbon. Least. 2.5. That's Linus Pauling's electronegativity assignments, which he was awarded a Nobel Prize. All right, 7C. An electronegative element attracts or repels. The electronegative will attract electrons. Okay, so that's why in the reaction you have HA, those electrons are going from and taking hydrogen's electron with it. In general, the reaction HA goes H plus plus A minus usually those electrons are going towards A. Which conjugate base, so this is your conjugate base, this is your acid, this is your conjugate acid, which conjugate base would be more stable? The one derived from the most or the least electronegative? Okay, the most stable would be, and you can see the pKa values here, um, the most. So fluorine would be able to attract those electrons. It attracts the electrons more, electrons more than, let's say, carbon, okay, which has a, a 2.5, and I always do 50, but that's okay so large it doesn't matter okay so uh, the most electronegative is the answer to that rank the conjugate bases from most stable to least stable so the fluoride would be more stable that's your most and then OH the same setup NH2 to CH3 and that's because of electronegativity of the element that is getting the charge okay once your group agrees on the above questions write a statement that describes how electronegativity affects the stability and the strength of the conjugate base so what would you write the more electronegative um, element of a conjugate base when comparing elements of similar size are more stable than lesser electronegative elements. And therefore, the resulting acid would be stronger. All right, now we're on model four. 
page 35. We're talking about acid base strength and the inductive electron withdrawing effects. You notice we have a model for each one of the um, factors that, if, that determine acid base strength. Okay, so I am going to take the time to rewrite this model before we ask the question. So this is an alcohol. Hopefully you're learning your functional groups. And it's this hydrogen here that's acidic that's located on the oxygen here. Okay, so that's your acidic hydrogen, not the ones on the, on the carbon. You just saw the difference there, right? 50 minus 15. Okay, so the difference between this hydrogen has about a pKa of 50, the carbon hydrogen, and the pKa of about 16 for the carbon or for the oxygen hydrogen. Okay, what's the difference? What's 50 minus 16? 34. Must I write it? 34 zeros. Okay, I think you get the point. All right. A lot of times people can't figure out their acidic proton. That's the difference. All right, so let's just go on and draw my Lewis structure, which you have been practicing. Here's my oxygen. And see how it has two electrons, pairs? There it is. Okay, that's equation one. Now we're going to do equation two. Now this is inductive effect, okay? So this is inductive electron withdrawing group. Inductive means sigma bond, folks. It can pull the electronegative atom, can pull electron through the uh, sigma bond. And the rule of thumb three bonds away. You can do this three bonds away. Let's put our fluorine on here. Okay. Go ahead and now the pKa here. 12. So what's the difference between those? 10,000. Okay. And so how many bonds away is this? 1, 2, 3. Or 1, 2, 3. Okay. Hmm. This is, oh, not finished. All right. So... And that's equation two. All right, now we're going to answer the questions. Questions eight and nine. So 8A. Based on the pK values in model four, which alcohol is stronger? Is it ethanol, equation one, or trifluoroethanol? Ethanol, right? Equation one. B. Compare the conjugate bases in equation one and equation two. What is different? What is the same? Okay, A, B, different. Well, one of uh, the carbon, one carbon has three fluorine, whereas that's equation two, whereas equation one, the carbon has three hydrogens. That's what's different. What's same? The acidic proton is still on oxygen. Okay, C. Consider the conjugate base in equation 2. The electrons in the covalent carbon fluorine bond should be equally or unequally shared. Do you remember your dipole moment? Okay, this 
is very electronegative, 4.0. So those are very, would pull the electrons that way, okay? This is a pulling electrons in that covalent bond. So this is electron withdrawing. That's a very strong electron withdrawing group. So they would be unequally shared. Okay, it's like a tug of war in that sigma bond. Label the carbon fluorine with the delta positive and delta negative to indicate positive and negative charge, partial charge. What effect would a polar bond like CF have on a nearby negative charge? Um, it would pull that negative charge to itself and therefore it would be stabilizing. And this would make a more stable conjugate base. So explain how the presence of the CF3 group in equation two helps stabilizes the conjugate base. The word you want is inductive effect. Okay, that's inductive. Inductive means the electron withdrawing group is pulling through the sigma bond. Predict whether difluoroethanol would be more or less acidic than trifluoro. So they're asking you about this compound, F2H. CH2OH, what would you think? Less than the trifluoro. Make sure that everyone in the group agrees. Okay, let's go to nine. Okay. So nine, we need to draw these compounds here. That's how we solve problems in organic chemistry. Okay. A difference in electric negativity between atoms causes an inductive electron withdrawing. Inductive. I'm just going to withdrawing group, electron withdrawing effect. Shown by a dipole arrow. Draw dipole arrows for each of the polar bonds in the following cases. Okay, the first one does not. We don't, we don't draw between carbon and hydrogen. We assume in organic chemistry that they're essentially the same. Um, here, carbon and fluorine, we would draw that dipole arrow. Here we would draw one dipole arrow. Here you could just draw a little one because it's less than the uh, fluorine. Okay, B, rank the above bases from most stable to least stable. Okay, this would be the most stable because it has three fluorines to pull that um, negative carbon. This would be the second, this would be the third, and this would be the least stable. Draw the acid that each of the above cases would be derived from. Predict which acid is more acidic. So this would be CH3, CH4, this would be CF3, CHF2, okay, so this would be your most acidic, just the same, okay, second, third, least. Um, these are still not acidic though, just so you know. As a group, discuss whether electronegativity effects or inductive effects would be stronger, okay. Um, electronegativity is stronger. Electronegativity affects, when do you care about this? The same size, that means the same period, are going to be um, more effective, um, more effective or stronger than inductive effects. Okay, and inductive effects um, 
the electronegativity is that this negative charge is on the carbon atom. You see how that's all the same? So the only time you look at inductive effects is if the negative charge is on the same atom. And then you got to look at inductive effects. But if you're comparing um, CH4 versus water, as you're looking at CH3 as its conjugate base, or AOH is its conjugate base, okay, this is going to be actually more stable. Okay, so what is this? The pKa is 15.7. The pKa of this is 50. That's a big difference, stabilizing the negative charge on which atom. And those are on the same size. But if you're comparing um, HO to iodide, well, iodide is going to be like HI is what, negative 10? Water, pKa, is 15.7. So HI is going to be uh, more acidic because this is the um, size is more polarizable. And that's in if you're looking at the group. So you got to look at what's stabilizing that negative charge. All right, we are on our last one. And this is very important, this last one. Uh, because residence usually always wins when you're dealing with organic. Okay, so we're looking at model five. Let's actually start with a clean sheet here. Okay, model five, and this is going to be the residence. And um, you're going to look at residence with organic compounds. Okay, we know organic compounds have the carbons. Um, um, well, when, well, when we, we compare, compare HI, HI and H2O, H2O folks, folks that's, that's those good. are inorganic compounds. And I told you, our inorganic acids are stronger than your organic acids. When we're talking about organic acids, your strongest ones are your carboxylic acid functional groups. Okay, so when you talk about resonance, we want to look at that. So let's look at model five and then you are welcome to work on your additional problems okay so this is your acidic proton on the carboxylic acid now let's continue on this will Produce this. This is equation three. I like to put my lone pairs in there. All right. And then let's do equation four. Um, this is acetic acid. That is the active ingredient in vinegar. And this is the acidic proton, if you want to call it that. And let's make that the red. And then draw our Lewis structure here. That's equation four. Okay, 10A. Identify the conjugate base for each of the reactions in model five. Okay, this is your conjugate base, conjugate base. Compare the conjugate base from each reaction. Focus on the atom that contains the charge. Okay, so we're looking at oxygen. I need to determine if there are any difference in electronegativity. They're both oxygens. No difference in electronegativity, charge, or size. Okay, there's no difference. It's 10B. 10C. Draw all possible resonance structures for each conjugate base shown in model 5. All right, so now we're looking at, we're looking for SP2 or SP carbons. 
So you can draw this carbon here is an sp2. The oxygen is an sp2. This oxygen is an sp2 because it's got lone pairs. They're in the next sp2. This carbon here, sp3. Okay, it cannot, it doesn't have any lone pairs. It cannot become sp2, so we don't worry about it. These electrons go here, and then the electrons go up there. We do our double-headed arrow for resonance. And then those electrons go onto oxygen, making it negative. And they are your resonance structure. And that's all the resonance structures. So you have two resonance structures. Okay, what about this one here? Well, this carbon here has one, two, three, four things, sp3. Okay, it cannot hold those electrons. This carbon here, one, two, three, four, sp3. Okay, sp3 is like a roadblock. Those electrons can't go there because there are no unhybridized p orbitals for those lone pairs to go into. You can't make pi bonds. So there's zero resonance structures. Or if you, you or if you want to compare numbers, you'd say one resonance structure. You see, because you count it as itself, and then this would be two. Okay, so draw all possible resonance structures. Okay, now we're on 10D. Resonance forms show the electrons can be spread out or delocalized, which has a stabilizing effect. Which conclusions can be made about how resonance effects stabilize the conjugate base? Okay, well, you know what the pKa value? of acidic acids between 4 and 5. The pKa value of ethanol is about 16. So you're looking at 11 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11. So that is how much more acidic acetic acid is than ethanol. Okay? And that's because of resonance effect. You can stabilize that negative charge. It's delocalized over the um, both oxygens. So based on your answer, which one would be more acidic? Acetic acid or ethanol? Acetic acid. Okay, number 11. It wants us to draw the conjugate base For each of the following acids by removing the hydrogen indicated on the arrow. Draw all possible resonance structures for the conjugate base. And I like to draw these out. Just because it gives it to you that way doesn't mean you have to draw them that way. Okay. I also want you to practice whenever you can naming your functional groups. So let's look at what those functional groups are. And I will highlight the color in each one instead of using the arrow. Okay. Um, the first one is an alkene, right? alkene. This one would be an aldehyde. You see the carbonyl next to the hydrogen. And this one is an alkane. All right, now each one of these carbon hydrogens that we're, draw we're losing here, just put H plus over here for the conjugate acid, um, is A, B, B come from a carbon. All right, so basically these electrons are going to go on that carbon. So you just draw the CH. So you got to be able to draw your conjugate bases, folks. This one here. one here. Mm 
Okay, it also says draw all resonance forms for each conjugate base. Well, let's look at this. So this carbon here, sp3, this carbon is sp3. So there's nothing. Um, this carbon here, 1, 2, 3 is sp2. This one's sp2. So we can draw some resonance structures. This one here is sp2. And that oxygen is an sp2. Okay. So these blue ones are sp2. And therefore, you can delocalize this um, lone pair. So if that goes there, this goes here. Okay. So that's one here. These electrons can go here, and then those electrons go there. And then this one we don't have any. Okay, so we drew all possible resonance form for each conjugate base. Predict which base would be the most stable and which would be the least stable based on resonance stabilization. Well, and you count resonance structures, okay? And then, so we're going to look at, one, you count the number of resonance structures when you're trying to decide the stability, okay? So we're looking at 11B. The other thing you do is, remember, when you figure out the major contributor based on the those four number of octets satisfied um, the charge if it's on the electronegative atom the more electronegative atom so but the first thing you count is resonance charge because there's zero this is going to be the least stable and i'll tell you <coughs> excuse me this pka of an alkane is 50. that's the cost of trying to take that hydrogen Okay, here we have the same number of resonance structures. So now we gotta look at major contributor. Okay, would it be more stable to have the negative charge on the oxygen or on the carbon? Yes, the more electronegative oxygen would stabilize the negative charge. So this one's gonna be more stable. So this is gonna be your most acidic. Okay, this is gonna be your most acidic. And then this one's going to be second. And then this would be the least. And I can tell you, you won't do pK values of, of the, this is called the alpha carbon until later. But this is a pKa of about 25. And this pKa is a lilic. Hmm, I'd have to look that up. Lilic carbon. I guess, um, I guess it'd be in the 30s, would be my guess. Okay, once again, 25, 50, 30, they're not very acidic. Most of your um, acidic protons are going to come from an oxygen, like carboxylic acid. All right, I think that covers, once your group has reached an agreement, predict which acid would be the most acidic and the one least. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, now I'm going to look at your uh, additional problems that are due this week on page 38, 39, and 40. You want to be able to practice drawing those acid-base reactions, label the acid-base, conjugate acid, conjugate base. Go ahead and put your pKa values in. Okay, so that's kind of what 12 is doing. Um, and then you got to apply those principles. Um, All right, well, good luck.